So in this video we're just going to be looking at examples of where sensors are used. So let me know if you have any questions about what you see in this video. What do pressure sensors measure? So pressure sensors measure pressure, normally of a liquid or a gas. The measure of pressure is based upon the force it takes to stop a liquid or gas from expanding. Describe how pressure sensors are used in the vehicle industry. So they are used to form part of the safety system of a vehicle. Pressure sensors are used to monitor the oil and the coolant in the vehicle. They are used to regulate the power given to the engine based on the pressure placed on the accelerator and brake. It's also used in the airbag safety system. So it uses pressure sensors. The airbags will be triggered to inflate when a high amount of pressure is applied to certain parts of the vehicle. So just know these two examples of how pressure sensors are used in a vehicle. Describe how pressure sensors are used in chemical and nuclear plants. So they are used to monitor and control the flow of gases and liquids in industrial plants. This means that the substances are, that are being transported in the plant or any chemical reactions that are carried out are done extremely safely. This makes sure that a high level of safety is maintained in the industrial plant at all times. So it's an example of how pressure sensors are used in chemical and nuclear plants. Describe how pressure sensors are used in the aviation and the marine industry. So they are used to monitor and control the atmosphere within an aeroplane or submarine. This is to make sure that the correct breathing conditions are maintained. Describe how a pressure sensor is used in touch screens. So in a touch screen, a touch screen that uses pressure sensors built up of multiple layers. When pressure is applied to the top, top layer of the screen, it is pushed into the bottom layer of the screen, creating a connection that generates an electrical signal. This electrical signal informs the device of the location where the pressure has been applied to the screen. And that is an example of how pressure sensors are used in touchscreens. Describe how moisture and humidity sensors are used in meteorological stations. So they're used to help monitor and predict weather conditions by measuring humidity levels. So that is how moisture and humidity sensors are used in meteorological stations. How moisture and humidity sensors used to control allergies. So an atmosphere that is high in humidity can encourage the growth of bacteria and mold. This can trigger allergies. So humidity sensors can be used to monitor and control the level of humidity in a room. How are moisture and humidity sensors used in manufacturing? So in the manufacturing of many products, the level of moisture in the atmosphere is very important. If the humidity is too high or too low, it could adversely affect the product. So the control of the level of moisture in the atmosphere is very important in terms of manufacturing. How are moisture and humidity sensors used in agriculture and farming? So humidity and moisture sensors can be used to grow and farm crops in the best conditions possible. For monitoring and controlling the conditions in which the crops are grown, the most perfect conditions can be created, producing the best crops. So the level of moisture in the soil can be kept constant to help the crops grow. So it's important that moisture and humidity sensors are used to make sure that these crops are grown in the best conditions possible. What do temperature sensors measure? Okay, so temperature sensors monitor and measure the temperature of an environment. They do this by measuring how much heat is present. So just remember, whatever the sensor measures, they usually put the term before the word sensor or sensors. So temperature sensors measure temperature. How are temperature sensors used in washing machines and dishwashers? So temperature sensors used in a washing machine and a dishwasher to measure the temperature of the water. So there are always going to be some examples of where microprocessors are used. So this is kind of like a control system. So a microprocessor in the washing machine or dishwasher will receive the data sent by the temperature sensor and can trigger an action to heat up or cool down the water if necessary. So it's controlling or trying to maintain the temperature at a certain point. So a washing and dishwasher can be an example of a control system using a microprocessor. How are temperature sensors used in dryers? So temperature sensors used in dryer to measure the temperature of the hot air flowing into the dryer. A microprocessor in the dryer will receive the data sent by the temperature sensor and can trigger an action to heat up or cool down the air 
if necessary. How are temperature sensors used in refrigerators and freezers? So temperature sensors used in a refrigerator or freezer to measure the ambient temperature inside. A microprocessor in the refrigerator or freezer will receive the data sent by the temperature sensor and can trigger an action to heat up or cool down the air if necessary. So you can see it's again a bit repetitive. Um, so just always keep in mind that if they're talking about control systems or using sensors in certain areas such as refrigerators and freezers, just got to be able to mention the fact that there's a microprocessor involved and that sensors will send information to the microprocessor and the microprocessor will use some actuator to heat up or, or to change the environment. What do light sensors measure? So light sensors monitor and measure light. What is a photoresistor? So this type of light sensor will change its resistance when light shines on and is normally used to measure the intensity of light. So we're going to have a look at an example now of how a photoresistor might be used in a system such as a traffic system. So why is a photoresistor important? So this is important in devices such as digital cameras or street lights. The camera can adjust the level of flash needed depending on the level of light currently detected by the light sensor. So for example in a street light can detect when it gets dark enough to need to switch the light on. Okay, so in the street light, if it is picking up that the level of light is decreasing, then the street light will begin to switch on the light, depending on how much light it can detect. Okay, cool, so that's the end of the lesson. Please let me know if you have any questions. I hope that was okay.